everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight for Social Media Planning Made Simple. Uh, we are uh, very lucky to have Mel Bobin from Small Marketing, who she focuses on social media and digital marketing uh, with services ranging from full management to one-on-one -on -one consultations. Uh, and tonight, Jessica is going, or sorry, I saw Jessica on the list. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mel is going to be leading us in an interactive workshop and actually going through her workbook with us. And um, amazingly, Mel is also offering 20% off for collective members off of anything in her shop. So we're gonna be sharing that link after and uh, that is gonna be open indefinitely for our members and we're really excited and just very grateful. So thank you, Mel. And uh, I'm going to hide my screen and okay. let you take it from here, but I'm gonna be here. So let me know if you need anything. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I'll just do uh, just uh, piggyback off of what um, she already said. My name is Mel. I'm here in St. Louis, and I have been in business. This is my sixth year on my own. Started out as a freelance social media manager and kind of grew my business into small marketing. And I primarily manage other business, other social media accounts for small businesses, but I also have recently expanded into consulting for small businesses that do their own social media. So I feel like a lot of you fall into that category. Um, and the workbook that I'm going to be taking you through tonight is kind of something that came as an idea um, just from talking to so many small business owners who want to plan their own social media and are really good at running their own social media, because a lot of you are doing a great job, um, but maybe you could just use a couple of pointers on how to make it a little more efficient and save you some time, because I know posting on social media takes so much time. So instead of thinking about it one post at a time, we're going to look at what a month of planning could look like. So maybe you could have it in your mind um, the next month or so, four weeks of posts that will get planned out tonight. Um, or you could think about May planning if you know that that will be a busy time. I know that a lot of businesses are kind of ramping back up. People are getting out a little bit more. So we thought this would be great timing um, to do this workshop at this time. And spring in general is just a great time to start planning for summer promotions, maybe even fall promotions. So we can have that all in the back of our head as we're thinking about um, the different types of things that we'll work through tonight. So the workbook is offered as part of my small shop that I just started. It's all available on my website. And in addition to this workbook, there's a lot of other um, downloads, consulting sessions, um, and I'm always adding different services to the shop. So the 20% off for collective members is good on everything in my shop, including this workbook. If you wanted to buy the whole workbook, we're gonna go through bits and pieces of it, kind of like the high notes. The whole workbook itself is kind of a little bit more expanded and dives a little bit deeper. Um, and it's something that you could use month over month. So without talking too much, we're just gonna go ahead and dive in. And I'll start with a little bit of upfront work on talking about our target market. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and show you um, this slide from the workbook is just a simple prompt to explain your business in one to two sentences, which sounds really easy, but sometimes can really, when you are in your own business all the time, this can be really hard to do. So I wanted us all to kind of start here and think about how you would explain your business or your services to somebody in a quick one to two sentence blurb. So for example, mine would be small marketing is a simple, focused and authentic approach to social media and digital marketing by Mel Bobin. We're located in St. Louis, Missouri. So I wanted to give everybody a couple of minutes, um, since this will be kind of a working session, to think about how you would kind of anchor your brand statement. And that will kind of be what we keep in mind the whole time when we're planning our posts. Because I know a lot of times there can be some noise on social media that gets us a little bit distracted and we start to kind of veer off into different lanes. 
But if we have this um, statement about ourselves, we can kind of use this as a North Star for all of our posts to refer back to and to fall under. So I'll give everybody a couple of minutes to kind of jot down and maybe you come back to it later to um, polish it up. Maybe jot down your bullet points of who you are in a nutshell. And if anybody wants to be my guinea pig, feel free to chime in and we can do yours as an example for the group too. Um, so I'll give everybody like one to two minutes to do that and we'll come back together and move on to the next part. And if anyone has any questions also along the way as we're working through, feel free to chime in so that everyone can hear it because I'm sure you are also not the only one. Okay, so I think that was about two minutes or so. And what this will really just help us do, it, which says along the bottom here, this would be a great thing to use for your Instagram bio, kind of forces you to keep it short. And we're gonna keep this in the back of our heads the whole time we're planning through this workbook. So I'm gonna move on to the next slide here. And it's kind of gonna go a little bit more into the personality of your brand. So all of this is just a little bit of pre-work before we get into our planning so that we're all kind of zoned in on what we're really getting after here. So some there's some space here and you can just jot down um, on your paper that you've got in front of you or even type it in a little note. Um, I like to think about when I'm planning my social media posts, the personality of my business using really descriptive words. So am I luxurious? Am I fancy? Um, try to think of some descriptor words in a good way to, if you're getting a little bit stuck, think about if you're not a store and you were a store, like what would it look like? Would it be really colorful? Would it be... Um, you know, more simple, more modern? Would it be um, vintage? Those are all kind of descriptor words that you can kind of think about as you're thinking about the aesthetic of your brand, maybe how your logo looks. Um, if you've done any um, branded design on your website or on your social media before, all of these words you can just kind of dump into a list because this will help us kind of think about some imagery later on. And it will also help us think about the way we're going to talk to our audience. So maybe just start writing down maybe five or 10 adjectives that would describe your brand. So for mine, I really like to think about my brand as being really simple, minimal, um, efficient, um, I tend to be a little bit more neutral with colors. Uh, so all of that might be something that I would write here if I was going through the workbook. So I'll give everybody a couple minutes again. And if anyone here, especially in this part, this could be fun, wants to jump in and share some of their words or even drop some of their words in the chat, it might help other people um, get some inspiration as well. And I'm sure you all have better ideas than I just came up with <laughs> on the fly. Um, 
you could even think about brands that you really like that you find similar to yourself and you could think about what their style is. Um, if you were thinking about what kind of clothing your target market market might be wearing, um, that could be a really good place to start too. Um, so yeah, let, definitely chime in if you have questions. Again, this is just part of the kind of baseline of what we're doing before we get into the nitty gritty. Mel, I have a question. Yeah, for sure. Uh, would this be a place to add words about you as a human and also your business? Or do you want it to be strictly just uh, the brand or the business? Yeah, so probably more on the business side, but also I know so many of us, our business is really related and aligns with who we are too. So a lot of it, like for me, aligns with how I am as well. Um, so that's a great question. I think if your if your business is really separate from who you are and your branding really kind of is different than what you like wear or style in real life, I think it could kind of fall apart. But I think in a lot of cases, it would really align with your personality if that helps. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Does anybody have any interesting revelation so far. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if you can see the chat, uh, but April Matthews posted modern, clean, approachable, and fun. Those are perfect. Those are so good. Great example. Um, fun is a really good one. If, if you know you are more like upbeat and outgoing as a brand versus, you know, maybe if you're a law firm, you're a little bit more serious and, um, zipped up and polished. So that's great to come in here knowing that um, and to put put it on paper is really helpful. Um, so we can probably, it sounds like everyone maybe had a chance to come up with a few of them. If you're stuck, this is one of those things that you could always come back to later and add more words. Um, and also just thinking about things that you like and that you gravitate towards in other brands could be a really good way to start if you haven't done this part yet for your own brand. Um, so I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna go to a couple slides down again, cause I'm, I'm keeping this a little bit more high level and not going like into exactly every single slide in the workbook, but just kind of hitting the high notes here for this session. So this next part is starting to dive into who your ideal customers are. So I like to say ideal because I personally don't like to market to customers that I wouldn't want to be, or I wouldn't want to market to followers that I don't want to be my customers. So we're thinking of the ideal customer here. So we're thinking of the people that we really want to buy our products or services. So Things like their age, their gender, likes, dislikes, where they shop, what they do, um, where they live. And maybe for some of you, that's nationwide. Maybe for others, it's just St. Louis. Um, if you already have a lot of followers or a steady customer base, you could think about it and you like them, you want them more customers like them. Think about who they are and what kind of behaviors they have. Like, are they dog people? Are they cat people? Are they, um, do they have doctorates or do they have um, bachelor's degrees? It's kind of think about what other kind of brands they like as well. And we're just gonna note all of that. So it would be a total brain dump here. And 
Um, another thing that you could do if you don't really know who your customer base is, or if you don't really know who you want it to be, you could think about a brand that's really similar to yours and you could kind of start there. Um, so for me, for example, when I was first starting out, I kind of had like a Madewell type of idea. Um, it's a clothing store if you're not familiar with it. And I just kind of thought the type of person who shops there is the exact type of person that I would want to be my client. So it's a little bit higher end. It's very simplistic. It's very minimal. Um, the person who shops there probably also shops at like Kate Spade or Lululemon. So I was thinking about kind of other brands that align with it and writing down things like that. So I'll give everybody like a couple minutes here to work through that as well. And again, I would love to hear, I'm always interested in what, um, what you come up with too, or if you have a question that comes to mind, um, just let me know. And I know all of these pieces so far kind of seem like all over the place, but we're gonna kind of tie them all together when we get um, into the post planning. So we'll do like two minutes. Can you hear this music and do you like it for the um, time? Yeah, period? this is great. This is perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I love these. Okay, so I see um, from before some of the description words were vibrant, spunky, energetic, inventive. Those are great. Those are so good. Mm -hmm. Love those. Is that volume okay? Yeah, that sounds great. We'll do like maybe another minute or so, and then we're going to kind of go into the next phase, which talks about our purpose on social media and what we're on social to do. Ooh, these are really good. So April just posted, um, ideal customer is flexible, not needy or micromanaging, which is great to put in, to put to paper, good communicator, open-minded, driven, professional. So it's good to know that your ideal client is very professional. Um, you could also think about what kind of maybe jobs they have or what kind of industries they're in or what kind of lifestyle they tend to live. Um, thinking about like, are they more virtual? Are they in an office? Um, this will all kind of help us decide how we're going to talk to them. Mel, have you ever uh, actually named your, like once you've identified kind of this uh, placeholder, have you ever named them? So you can actually like say you're talking to Susie or something? Yeah, a lot of a lot of branding exercises like this, they will give them names. Um, and I meant to mention too, for some of us, I know for me, I have a couple different subsets of types of customers. Um, I have a few clients that I work with who are older males that are more techie that are not social savvy. And then I have a whole other set of clients that are very social savvy, younger female small business owners. So I kind of know that when I post on social, more of the women are following me on social. So I tend to talk more to them there. 
Um, but knowing that there are some really techie males that use my services as well. So it's, it's good to just keep that all in mind. And it might not always be one um, type of customer all the time. Thank you. And that's a good point. I'm a consultant, so I need to juggle many people at once, which can be tricky. Um, yes, that's a good thing to know that they're going to be the type of people that hire you uh, to trust as your expert, not um, to kind of not for you to be available to them 24 um, seven. OK, th this has been great. I think that we are probably ready to move on to the next part. Um, let me just move this out of my way here. Okay, so I'm going to go down a couple more slides. And this is kind of getting into the next phase of my workbook, which is how does all this brand personality um, thinking translate into social media posts? So I'm going to bring up slide 12 here. And this is a really good thing to just think about. And a lot of it might seem like a no brainer but it's great to just write it down and have it in place so that you can refer back to it if you feel like you're getting very clouded in your social media or like things are getting too complicated. So the question asks, why are you on social media? So for me, as an example, I am on social media to sell my social media services and digital marketing services. So it could be as simple as that. It could also be that I'm here to educate my followers about social media, that I'm here to get new customers. So any and all of those things would be reasons why you're posting. Think about what you would want to get from a post that you make. So making sales, getting website um, clicks, getting new followers could be one as well. Like what kind of actions are you expecting from your posts? And also, I think we had another uh, attendee join us. So thank you for being here. Uh, and for anyone who wasn't here at the very beginning, right now, Mel is going through her, work, her workbook with us uh, for social media. So we're going through a bunch of prompts where we're answering questions about our audience. Uh, right now, why are you on social? So this is really a working session where Mel is giving us um, the platform to kind of ask ourselves these questions. And then you can feel free to type your answers in the chat box. And then um, later in the evening, we'll also let everyone's uh, screens come on and we can continue to have a conversation when we move into the happy hour portion. So thank you for being here. Yeah, I'll give this page about another minute or so. Um, and if you just joined um, and you want to be a guinea pig for one of the pages and, and let us all, you know, chime in on or help you with one of the pages, just feel free to um, drop it in the chat or we could um, unmute you too. Those are great ones that April just posted. If anybody needs ideas, um, hers were <laughs> like, we're not tired of you. This is great. Um, I love seeing like how everyone takes the prompt and runs with it um, to sell your services. Great. That's probably number one to show potential clients my skills, 
that's great. You want everyone to know that you're the expert um, to get website clicks. That's definitely probably for everybody maybe would apply um, to network with potential clients. That's a great one. Probably everyone could use those as ideas too. Okay. Well, it sounds like at least April was able to get her list together. And again, if you might have an epiphany later on and want to add to this page, and this is just always so good to look at as you're doing your planning. So there's one more kind of pre-planning um, prompt that we're going to answer, and then we're gonna, gonna, going to get into the actual planning post of it. It looks like Allison posted as well. Those, yeah, to provide something of value, entertainment, inspiration, promotions. I love that. Um, if you think about why you yourself are on social media and why you would follow someone, it's great to think about why someone would want to follow you. So if you're there to inspire them, um, that's great too. That's, that's a great um, reason to be there. So I'm going to go to the next slide is slide 14. This is getting a little bit more into the translation of who we are and how it's going to take place on social media. And this slide is called, how do you talk? Um, it's pretty straightforward. There might be a better way to say that, but it's kind of breaking down what kind of language you use when you talk to your followers. And it might just be something that comes out without even really thinking twice about it. But I like to really think through this in case there's a way that you maybe could elevate the way you're talking to your followers to connect with them a little bit tighter than you are right now. So thinking about if we speak more seriously to them or are we more lighthearted with them? Like for example, if I was a doctor, I might be a little bit more serious about what I'm explaining versus if I'm, I don't know, maybe a yoga instructor. I might be a little bit more lighthearted um, with them in using a different tone of voice. So consider everything that you wrote down before, what you know about your followers or your target customers and how you think that would cater to the way you wanna to speak to them. So maybe a more luxurious brand would speak a little bit differently than if you were a more um, down to earth brand. And that could include jotting down thoughts here on how many emojis that would translate to, you know, are you the type of brand that you just uses a lot of emojis or maybe just one at a time? Um, you could also think about your punctuation. So you could think about if you're the type of brand that uses a lot of exclamation points, question marks, or the two together question exclamation, um, or if you're a brand that's really only going to like sparingly use an exclamation mark because you're more serious. So those are maybe some thoughts to jot down on this page. And it's just there so that when you're planning in the future, you're just gonna stay consistent with your posts and not go all over the place with them. Um, and that's a great point. Um, the women's creator just said, I love emojis. And that's great to know about yourself. And you might even have some signature emojis that you liked uh, or that you um, write down here or think about or a signature emoji combo that you use. Um, I don't personally have one, but I know a lot of brands maybe like, for example, Lululemon, they use the lemon emoji maybe a lot. Um, something to think about as you kind of brand the way that you speak. So let's see, is it bad to post the way I talk in real life, more lighthearted and fun using emojis and punctuation? That's a really good question. So we're doing this kind of to solidify the way that our business exists on social media, which is going to be, I think in a lot of cases, a little bit different than how you personally talk on social media. And that's why we're doing these exercises because they might, for, for me, I have my business and my personal pages separate from each other. I think a lot, in a lot of cases that makes sense to have them separate um, unless your, you as a person are the brand, if that makes sense. So this is the part where you really start to differentiate between how would I speak as a business owner versus how would I speak to my friends at happy hour? Because they're probably going to be 
a little bit different, maybe the same, of course, because it's you and a lot of your personality does come through in your business planning, but there might be just a little bit of a difference there. So this is a great, um, exercise to kind of really think through that and where you draw the line there. Um, I love that idea to use my business name is called peachy keen to use peaches as a very ownable emoji a lot, because then if you're thinking about how fast you scroll through, if you are using those, they're going to kind of pop out of the screen at people, um, versus just a bunch of text. So I love that idea. And if anyone else has any questions about this part can be a little bit tricky and it can kind of bend your brain a little bit because it takes, takes a little bit of thinking to really nail this part down. And it might even change over time as well, but it's always good to kind of think through. Um, and if you're ever really stuck, it can help to look at other brands on social media too, to just kind of know what kind of um, language and tone that they use. I like to use emojis to create bolded lists on extra space. That's a good point. If you are doing longer posts, you could think about what kind of emojis you're using to bullet out your posts or to make them a little bit more readable. And another thing you could think about here is um, we already talked about punctuation. I was gonna say the length. And if you are sharing a lot of in-depth education with people, um, or maybe your industry, when you're explaining something, it's very wordy. And that could be part of this too, that you are very in-depth, or maybe you are the type of brand that keeps it short and sweet and your captions are only like three or four words. I know maybe like a moodier brand would do that um, or a more um, modern kind of inspirational brand might keep it a little bit more condensed. It's okay, let me check the time. Okay. I'm gonna keep things moving because I wanna make sure that there's room at the end for questions. Um, oh, I was gonna see, okay, Rebecca says, I use casual mainstream language to make a metaphysical, spiritual stuff like meditation and crystals feel more normal, less woo woo. I love that. So if you are kind of bringing something different to your audience, that's a really good point that you just made that you're gonna use mainstream language to bring a new concept to your audience. Perfect, I love that. So next I'm gonna skip down, I'm skipping um, kind of like a third phase in this workbook that if you really wanted to do more of this type of work, um, you can use the discount code and download the whole thing, but I'm gonna skip to the planning part. So these are just great things to keep in mind. I'm gonna slide down here to brainstorming buckets. So when we think about our social media posts, I like to brainstorm them and put them into categories. And I try to think about having maybe four or five categories at a time. So we're kind of like jumping. We did a lot of target audience kind of copywriting work. And we're going to talk now about actually putting posts together. And then towards the end, we'll kind of join up with how that all ties in. And that will come as we write our captions. So if you think about all the types of social media posts that you're making, they generally tend to fall into different categories. And for a lot of businesses, they can be really similar, like about your company. So you're sharing your company's mission, why you exist, why you were formed, what you're here to do. Uh, services is probably another bucket that most people will have on their list. That's just a chance for you to talk about what you're selling, what the product entails. So like, why would someone buy this service from you versus this other service from you or this product versus another product? Um, educational tips could be another bucket. Inspirational tips could be, or quotes, inspiration could be another topic. 
events could be another topic. So um, go ahead and take a couple minutes just to jot down all the different things that you might be posting about. And then the caveat here is to remember, which I wrote down at the bottom of this slide, that every bucket that you, or category, whatever you wanna call it, um, should cater to one of your goals. So when we were back on slide 12, our purpose on social media, think about, so the educational piece, maybe you're teaching your follower or something, think about what you want them to do when you're sharing education. Probably you want them to buy a certain product. So try to keep that in the back of your head or why are you sharing an inspirational quote? That could be because you want them to follow you. So try to keep those two things in conjunction with each other when you're writing down your list. And again, if you have any questions, just put them in the chat box and I would love to um, answer them as everyone else is working through their buckets. We have music until my dog comes inside, and then I'll have to mute. Mine is staying quiet, surprisingly. <laughs> That's so good. Okay, I will try to keep it moving still again. If you feel like you got stuck with the buckets, just let me know and we can always um, talk about it during the question part as well. Um, yeah, this is so good to hear. Um, Jeanette just said, this exercise is so good. I realize I've only been focusing on three categories versus the five I should be focusing on. And I love that's like music to my ears because a lot of times we forget about those little things like announcing an event or um, maybe something you don't talk about as much and you wanna make sure that that makes it in here. And this is a great segue to the next uh, slide, which is your bucket frequencies. So if you think about how many posts you make per month, and let's just say you make a post every day. For me, I do 20 posts a month. It's one um, every weekday. I like to take the weekends off from posting. <laughs> um, so out of your however many posts you do a month, take your bucket and decide how many posts does each bucket receive. And I like to say, make your rules and then break your rules. So it doesn't have to be the same every single month and maybe one month you're gonna post more about a certain bucket than another month and that is totally fine. But this helps put slots into a blank piece of paper if you're staring down the month of May thinking, how am I gonna post 20 times? Well, if you have four buckets and this bucket is five times, the next one's four times, the next one's six times, you already know what your posts are gonna be about. 
So you're that much closer to um, filling in all of your slots for the month. So go ahead and maybe assign each bucket. Um, is there a right or wrong answer? No, there's not. But I was going to say, how the heck are you choosing? Um, oh, with as far as how much you're posting. I like to say it is what, what you are capable of um, doing consistently. So if you know that you, there's no way you can make a post every single day, try three or four times a week. And once you have that going consistently, then maybe try for five posts a week. Um, if right now you can only do one post a week, just, I like to say, stay consistent because if you're posting five times a week, one week, and then you're not posting for another, maybe you have a month where you never posted anything, that's where you can kind of start to lose some followers or um, lose some engagement. So I like to just stay consistent with how many I'm doing every month. Oh, that's a great point. I have my buckets color coded on a calendar so I can see visually how they're spread out. That's exactly kind of where we're going here. Um, we are gonna just ver uh, vary our types of posts throughout the whole month so that we can look and make sure that our social media posts are balanced and that we're not overselling ourselves or underselling ourselves. Do Instagram stories count as posting or are we just counting posts on the grid? For these, I try to focus first on my grid posts and I like to consider my stories to be just an added layer of what I'm posting on my grid. Um, yeah, I was one, you were one step ahead, you were. And that's why I'm like, every, most people are already doing a really good job and they should give themselves credit for it. Um, I like to think of my Instagram stories as like a plus up to one of my posts. So I like to think of this part as the grid and the stories as kind of another added bonus level. Um, okay, so once we have our frequencies kind of laid out, and again, if you're still thinking of how often to post about each thing, I would say the, the most important bucket, which is probably your services, um, selling your products or your services on your feed, that one's probably going to be the most, maybe with your educational part of it, like showing people that you're an expert in what you do and sharing wisdom. That might be kind of similar to your services um, as a bulk of your posts. And then for me, like inspirational kind of usually falls to the lesser frequency. Um, or maybe like testimonial customer feedback, that might be another bucket that you maybe post about once or twice a month, not as often as you're posting about services or education as an example. So I'm gonna go on to the types of posts in each bucket. So this is where we're just gonna flush out what types of posts fall under which category? Because when we start to lay out our buckets in the month, this is where the calendar starts to write itself. So if you know that you're gonna post about services five times a month and there's five different ideas for services, you could just use one of those every single month. Um, so this is where I kind of keep a bank of all of my post ideas or topics. And when I'm planning out my month, I kind of just look to my bank and think, okay, an employee spotlight, I'm gonna pull that one for this spot. Uh, behind the scenes, I'm gonna pull that one for this spot. So this groundwork here can really just help put you on a steady cadence within each of your buckets. So focus on the buckets that are gonna be more frequent for you. Obviously there's gonna be a lot of different types of posts that you're gonna do. And if you're stuck on what types of posts would be under each bucket, um, let me know and I can maybe help brainstorm with you as well. Um, Jessica was asking in the meantime, what are your favorite posting or planning platforms and tools? 
a good one where you could schedule a full multi-slide story and tech products. I actually haven't used a scheduler for stories because I'm kind of picky and I like to see exactly how they're going to look as I post them. But for scheduling posts, I really like to use Facebook Creator Studio, which lets you post to Facebook and Instagram. And it lets you schedule tags and at mentions as well. I also really like um, Hootsuite. And I also really like using one called Metricool. Um, it's M-E-T-R-I cool, C-O-O-L. And I just started using it and I just have found that it's really affordable. It has, so far it hasn't um, glitched on me yet, which is common with social schedulers. Um, and I have just found that I like the way it's laid out. Um, yeah, and I, I can second that I really like Canva as well for branding and imagery, which I'll touch on a little bit as we kind of round out this, this planning part. So we kind of moved in, we started, if you jumped in a little late, we did a little bit with target audience and then we're moving into really laying out all the types of posts that we're gonna do, how often we're going to do them. And then I will move along to the actual calendar layout, which I have in here slide. So this next part just says scatter your buckets. And that's exactly what I do when I look at a month at a time. And this next slide here kind of shows that. I literally just start with a grid and I start to lay out, of course, taking into account which, which days they are, if there's any holidays or anything, I put those in first. And I just scatter so that all of my service posts are not gonna happen. They're not always gonna be on Mondays. For example, all my education tips are not always gonna be on Wednesdays. I like to mix them up because I think that's a good way to grab different followers at different times with different messages to give them a steady drip so that they're not getting uh, bored by your content. So if you wanna draw yourself a little grid out for whatever you're planning for, start to put in your buckets. And if you got to the types of posts section um, in detail, you could even start to put which type of post is going to go on each day aside from what bucket it's in. And if anyone's planning for May, I'm gonna give a couple of pointers. Um, I have like a social media holidays calendar that I put together and it's also in my store on my website. And I'm gonna look at the May page. Anybody need some starting points? Um, May is graduation month. So that could always be a theme if it applies to your business. Um, May 4th is Star Wars day. May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, of course. Um, May 9th is Mother's Day. And May 31st is Memorial Day. And I know like baseball is gonna be a big topic, especially in St. Louis. Um, kick off to summer, kids will be getting done with school. Um, so those are all things like some theme ideas if you're kind of thinking like what kind of themes might take shape in May. Um, motherhood might be a good topic because we've got Mother's Day. Um, Work-life balance might be a topic because we have a lot of fun stuff going on that drags us away from our computers. Um, and then always a topic that you could post about really anytime is new news in your industry. So if there's some sort of new trend or topic that you could cover that relates to your business. That could be a fun idea for a post as well. Um, so as you're kind of laying out your topics for the month, 
this is kind of where the magic happens and it all starts to piece together where you're not thinking about the post each time you open up your phone, like, what am I going to post? Um, you should kind of already have an idea of what's coming up for the week. So you can kind of start thinking about what images are going to go with the posts. And the very beginning, you can start to think about the calls to action that each post is going to have. So as you're thinking about the bucket, the topic, then you'll kind of start thinking about what the caption is going to be. You will want to keep your target audience, what is going on in their life at this time, um, what other types of brands they might be associating with, and kind of layer that into the way you're writing your posts. And then you could kind of, you could go back even to the slide about how you talk if you're getting a little stuck about wording. And you could think about, um, like for example, if your customers really like baking, you might wanna relate something about baking to your, like for me, I just did a post um, the other day about social media planning about how you wouldn't bake one cookie at a time, you would bake a batch of cookies at a time. So I kind of just made a correlation with something that I know maybe a lot of my target audience is doing and tying that into the caption. So when we have our topics and our buckets already laid out, it gives us a chance to kind of get a little more creative when we know who our followers are because we're not worried about what we're posting about. So hopefully that all makes sense. And if you have any questions about this part and want to drop them in the comments, we're kind of getting um, like rounding out um, and getting into the question and answer part. I know this was like a ton of information, but hopefully it helped you kind of go through like the process of laying out a month's worth of posts at a time. And what I really like to do then is honestly, I like to take this grid here that I came up with and I like to copy it and start with that for the next month so that I'm not starting with a completely empty slate and I kind of jumble it back up again and take into account which posts performed really well. Um, maybe I know that, you know, inspirational quotes on Mondays are just killer for me. So I, maybe I want to keep those there. Um, but at least you're not going to start from scratch then really ever again, if you've gone through this process. Um, so if you want to keep, we can work like a couple more minutes on getting this part set up. Um, and then I'll just kind of add a, a couple more notes about like rounding out your plan for the month. And then hopefully everybody has kind of something to go off of to get a jump start on their plans. Oh, that's a good question. My followers do better with lifestyle photos, which is hard because I didn't take that many. So that's a really good question. And I'll just kind of touch on the imagery parts. And that's what I like to plan out my topics first and then think about the images. Um, because I like when the images kind of flow together instead of um, mushing maybe some pictures together that don't look good next to each other. So lifestyle photos, if you don't have a lot of them, I really like using Unsplash or Canva even has some good stock imagery. Um, that could be a good place to start. I do think that real photos perform better than um, images that are mostly text. I do post text images frequently, but I like to mix them up with lifestyle images like you're mentioning. Um, so hopefully that kind of helps. So yeah, we'll take like a couple, maybe two more minutes to fill in your ideal um, grid.
and then we can kind of get into a little bit more on imagery and then we'll open it up for questions. Use an app to project what your feed will look like. Good question. I will answer that. Okay, I am gonna move on to just a couple notes about imagery. So you might not have been able to finish, obviously, all of your topics, or maybe you got your topics done, but not your types of posts. But hopefully this gets you off to just a good start for a bigger chunk of posts than you're used to planning at the same time. Um, there was a question, do I use an app to project what my feed will look like? I actually don't use an app because for me, I am sharing my grids um, with my clients like ahead of time. So sometimes I'll lay it out in a Google doc for them to see, um, or other times I will, for my own, I know I put kind of the images together in Canva, like in a row so that I know kind of what they're going to look like. I try not to get too, too worried about it looking too perfect. Um, because for me, I like to focus more on what all the messages are. But if there's going to be two next to each other that just aren't really going to jive or flow, then I'll just kind of swap some other posts around so that the aesthetic stays clean. Um, so I try not to go for perfect, but more polished. Um, because I know there's that saying like, done is better than perfect. And for me, I would rather have like an extra post go out than worry too much about overly messing with the images. So that's just where I put my time and effort. But of course, if you're a more image focused type of business, it might be more important for you to focus on imagery than captions, et cetera. So always just taking into account where which part of it to put your energy is important as well. Um, so there is, that was kind of, I just wanted to touch on the imagery part of it that when you have this all laid out, it really can help you figure where I'm gonna put lifestyle images or photos versus where I'm gonna put text images or quotes or images with like writing on them. So having this type of grid ahead of time versus in the moment, um, like just opening your phone and trying to decide what to post really, really, really helps. And even if 
you're worried about, um, like, is this going to look right? The fact that you're thinking about it ahead of time and planning it, it I think it just puts you so far ahead of, of so many others who aren't thinking about it. And it can really make your feed look a lot more polished, um, even if you're not a designer. So that's just kind of my two cents about the imagery part of things. Um, and then just kind of to like fully close the loop on all the stuff we did at the beginning and kind of planning out the uh, captions. The last thing I do when I have all of my captions put together is I make sure I add a call to action to them. So going back to that very beginning part and asking yourself, why am I here on social media? Make sure you're asking your followers to do what you want them to do. Um, a lot of times people just read your caption and they're like, okay, and they'll just keep going. But if you give them that little, you know, share this, um, follow me, uh, visit my website, visit this certain product page. If you add that in, you're more likely to get that action out of it if you ask for it. And then I always go in and I add in the extras the hashtags. So if you're using this for Instagram, it would be up to 30 hashtags that you can add. Um, tagging anyone that might be relevant or at mentioning them. So if you're ever talking about somebody else, making sure that you're shouting them out. And then adding in a location as well. So if you're talking about a certain place or you're based at a certain place, like your store, make sure your location is always on your post. That kind of stuff can be so easy to forget about, but it makes a huge difference in just tailoring your post to the right audience. And then the very last thing on my list was choose your imagery thought imagery thoughtfully. So just taking that glance at everything and making sure you're polishing it all um, so that it's ready to go. So that was kind of what I really wanted to get through and I'm glad it's 8.06. So I thought that with the next until 8.30 or so, or whenever we wanna transfer into happy hour where we don't talk about our businesses um, or boring social media planning, um, we could just answer any and all questions that people might have about planning anything random about social media in general, I could make sure that I answer. Um, and before we get all into that, I wanted to make sure I gave the info on downloading the workbook if you want the whole thing. It's about 55 slides. So we really only got through like a, a portion, kind of like the, the, high, the high notes of it. Um, my website is smallmarketing.com. And the small just has one L. So it's S-M-A-L marketing.com. And the code for 20% off of everything in the shop, which includes even, I do consulting ses sessions if you want to just get on the phone for an hour and plan. Um, or there's other downloads available too. 20% off and the code is the collective. Um, so just wanted to make sure that everybody had that um available and I can answer any other questions in the meantime for a little bit before we get to the fun part thank you thank you this was amazing yeah I hope that everybody I feel like of course it went by really fast and um there's probably more to go back to from this like if people want to watch the recording and kind of go along and get press pause for more time in between. Um, but okay, here's that question. Is there a right time of day to post that captures more people? That's a really good question. So yes, there are better times than others to post. And I like to give the caveat of it's going to depend on your followers. Um, everybody's page is going to be a little bit different. There are articles out there that say, in general, which times are better than others, but I like to go to my insights on either Facebook or Instagram, whichever platform you're on. And for example, on Instagram, if you go to the little, I think they call it the hamburger, the three lines in the corner, 
you can go to your insights and they kind of look like that. And then you can go to your audience. So you just click on audience and it's going to give you a follower breakdown. And at the very bottom of that slide, I can get it to go, are times. So this is when your followers are logged on the most. So I like to go to the days instead of the hours. Oh, good. I'm glad you have it. Yeah, it's honestly, this part's kind of, if you don't know where you're going in the insights part, it's way at the bottom, but it breaks down the days. And if you tap on the days, it will give you numbers. So for me, my highest day is Wednesday, it looks like. So it'll literally show you like how many people are logged on on average each day. And then you can flip back to hours and it will kind of show you which days, which times they're on. So I'll go to Wednesday since that was my best day. And it says that most of my followers on Wednesday, they're on at noon. So I would say if you get a whole bunch of new followers to check that again, because it will change based on your followers and maybe even based on the time of the year, it could be different. Um, I know that was probably way different last year because everything was locked down. Um, but maybe now that people are back to work in the office or back to like school pickups and all of that, the times might change. So if you look at it once, maybe check it again, like in a few months. And it will also break down this is a really cool kind of spot. It'll it'll break down your uh, male, female, location, age range as well. So there's a lot of really um, useful nuggets of information. Um, okay, good questions about hashtags. So I... I personally use them on my own posts and all of my clients' posts. Um, I do think they really can help with reach if you're using them um, the right way and really using um, a mix of widely used hashtags and less widely used hashtags. So you can use up to 30. If you don't have time to do all 30 of them for every post, I know that can be a lot to do try to use maybe eight to 10, maybe a dozen of them. And I like to try to switch them up with each post. So I have maybe um, six or eight different sets of hashtags that I like to use just so that I'm not using the same set every single time. So maybe I use each set once a week or so. Um, I have heard it, This is a, I get this question all the time if it's better to put hashtags in the caption or in the comments. For me, I since I plan my posts in advance, some scheduling tools don't let you put it in the comment and you have to put it in the caption. So I do that just because I like to plan my posts in advance. I haven't seen a huge difference either way. Um, I've heard it both ways. I've not really been able to prove one way or another. I just think that overall using them is better than not using them at all. So that's kind of where I stand on that. And then recommendations for finding the right hashtags. I also have in my shop, um, if you want me to make your hashtag sets for you, I do have that as a service. But if you're looking for your own um, I like to go to other pages that are similar to myself and just kind of browse with what they're using. And then I have another trick, which I think still works, but Instagram changes all the time. So you never know. You can search for a hashtag. And let me see if this will work for me. It's not doing it for me right now. Um, so for example, I pulled up hashtag women in business. And sometimes at the top, it will say related hashtags and it will give you similar hashtags to the ones you just searched, all kind of at the top. It's not doing that for me right now, 
But another thing that I like to do if I don't see them listed at the top is to search the top posts who use this hashtag women in business. And I look at which hashtags the top posts are using. So for example, this one also used boss babe, boss lady, women helping women, women inspiring women. And that can be a really good place to go. And from there, you can kind of just get down a wormhole of other posts that are using these similar hashtags. Knowing that when you click the hashtag, it's going to tell you how many uses it has. This one has 2 million. So I might not want to use all hashtags with this many uses. And the way I like to think about it is, like I think I mentioned it a little bit earlier, mixing widely used hashtags. So this one's really used with less widely used hashtags. And I like to think about them as like worldwide all the way down to local. So I always like to include St. Louis related hashtags on some of my posts or just hashtags that are way more specific. So maybe social media planning is a more widely used hashtag, but something like Instagram image tips might be a little bit more niche of a topic. So I try to kind of taper it down. That's getting very into the weeds of it all. And it can be kind of like a, if you have the time to do it, that's great. And you can really start to see some extra reach when you do it that way. Um, If you don't though, I would just focus on maybe pulling together 30 to 40 of your favorite hashtags and kind of just mixing them up each time. And when you see that a post does really well, you can note that those hashtags performed really well for you. Thanks, Meg. (laughs) Um, Does anybody else, the hashtag question was such a good one. Um, if anybody else has a question about anything else, um, I know reels are kind of a hot topic right now. Um, I have, I'm a little bit, I have to admit, I'm a little slow to learn new rollouts on apps like that. And reels is kind of forcing everyone to be their own video editor. And with things like that, that roll out, I kind of like to watch and see how people are using them first before I use it. So I've tried Reels personally. I don't really see, uh, there is, I think a little bit more reach with Reels, Um, but I know that small business owners are really strapped for time. So I wouldn't be so focused on making a ton of Reels and spending so much time on them. Maybe try them once a week or once every other week to start with, unless you're really, really good at it and you want to, you know, do more than that. But in my opinion, if you can plan five posts in the same time that you plan one reel, I would go with five posts and worry about the reel later. Um, That's my dish on the reels. (laughs) Um, Recommendations for finding the right filter. Yeah. So I actually worked with a graphic designer on my feed. Um, and I also offer um, template design for feeds as well. If you were looking for like polishing up the look of your feed, I know that's not exactly what you just asked, but I haven't used the presets at all. Um, I kind of just edit my own photos to make sure that they're going to match and look good next to each other. But if you have them all lined up and you want them to be like filtered the same way, I know that there are presets that you can purchase online to make sure that they look super polished and you can just apply the same filter to every photo. Um, I don't have a favorite place to get those at the moment um, because I haven't used them really as much. I mainly um, pop into Canva to either design my image or to slightly edit it, like maybe brighten it up a little bit so that it just looks cohesive with my other posts. Yeah, of course. 
I was going to, I'm trying to think if there's any other commonly, um, I do have a ton of blog posts on my website as well. If you were browsing smallmarketing.com, I like to write about um, current topics in social media. So there's a ton of blog posts that give tips on like Instagram insights is one of my new posts that kind of walks through my favorite things to look at to gauge if your posts are performing well or not. Um, there's a Facebook insights post as well. And there's also, I'm trying to think of other recent blog posts. I did a post about reels. So if you want to read more about just each individual topic, um, there's a ton on the blog that you can get lost in as well, which might help. Anybody else? I'm interested if anybody got their um, calendar all planned out. I didn't start off the case of grid. Do you suggest starting over? Oh, this is a really good question. So Damaris is asking, I didn't start off with a cohesive grid. Do you suggest that I start over and delete posts or just start from where I'm at? I think it's up to you. If you wanna get some more posts loaded in and then go back later. Um, but I also don't feel like you have to delete your old posts because I actually really like when I go to a page and I can scroll down and see like, oh, they, you know, they've really grown since where they started and look at how, look at how nice their posts look now. And it's totally up to you though. I, I didn't always do my posts with like the extra white space in them. And I actually never deleted the posts from when I didn't do this style. Um, I just kind of left it up so that the amount of posts that I had showing on the counter just stayed accurate. Um, so I think it's okay to do it either way. Um, unless you kind of like, maybe if you rebrand it or if you don't sell a certain thing anymore or offer a certain thing anymore, you could archive those posts um, and leave them behind. But I don't think you have to, if you don't want to. I think it's okay to just switch, switch it over and to just run with it. But that's a really good question. Yeah, and I kind of, oh, go ahead. Oh no, sorry, I was gonna say, I think we had a few, um, one or two guests that joined kind of at this tail end. Okay. Do you mind maybe giving us like your favorite nuggets? Um, you know, it could be kind of rapid fire. If someone was going to walk away with anything, what is it? Yeah. Yeah. So from the workbook, you mean? Yeah. And also yeah. just from tonight. So basically like what we got ourselves to during this workshop was, and we did it pretty quickly, was defining the types of posts that we were going to make. And then we define what types of um, posts fall into each of those topics. So this is the example slide here. Um, if you're talking about your services, you could go into pricing, sales, um, new services, about a certain service, hours of operation. Those are all types of services posts that you could make and then so on with each, with each topic. And then we scattered our buckets. So we kind of laid out all these different topics in a grid so that we would have a month's worth of posts. And we know that, you know, there's a few different education topics. We're going to go like, one of them's going to go here. One of them's going to go there. Next one's going to go down here. And we just kind of made sure that the same types of posts weren't going out on the same days. Cause I like to mix it up so that our followers who I know we all tend to be creatures of habit, we're kind of on our phones at similar times. They're always getting different messages from us and they're gonna stay engaged. So one day they might see our inspirational quote and the next day when they log on, they might see something about a service that we offer. So we kind of just focused on the different types of posts we were gonna be doing and then planning them out so that our audience is getting like a full view of what we do. 
Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And then the tidbit that I was going to add um, to the last question was the authenticity part of social media that I think can tend to get a little bit lost along the way um, with just the note on not feeling like you have to delete your old posts unless they're like, you know, we can't say this anymore or we literally don't offer this service anymore. We wouldn't want someone to inquire about it. I like to kind of leave the old stuff up because it kind of shows that you're a real account that has kind of journeyed through their business. And I think it's okay to leave up old photos or um, old throwbacks as well. I think it just shows that you're a real person. And I think so many Instagram accounts now are so perfect and polished and you're almost like, whoa, is this even a real person? And I just like seeing the realness of an account. Um, so that's why I don't mind seeing older stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then also for anyone that joined um, at the tail end, uh, Mel has been kind enough to offer 20% off all of her workbooks and uh, pieces that are available in her shop on, uh, and can you share that website one more time? Yeah, smallmarketing.com. I can actually, I'll put it in the chat. Perfect. Small just has one L and then the, uh, the discount code is the collective and it saves you 20% off. So I offer consulting sessions. If you ever just want to like hop on the phone for an hour and talk about your social media accounts, it, that's a great way to just get some new ideas. Um, and I also have like little planning templates. I have like a calendar for the year where every month is a page and it even has like um, tax deadlines on it and self-care reminders. So as well as social media holidays and theme ideas. Um, so there's a lot of different resources that I've added to that um, over the last year or so, because I know that so many people plan their own social media and they don't always hand it off to a social media manager like me. And there's still a lot that they can do to elevate what they're doing online. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much. This was amazing. Yeah, I'm glad it was. I hope it was helpful for everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Um, and we can definitely transfer to happy hour now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm going to uh, transition everyone to a panelist so you can actually see everyone. Um, and then if, uh, if anyone wants to keep their screen off, you can absolutely do that too. There's no pressure. But this way we can all see each other and, you know, do a symbolic cheers together. Yeah. Okay. One by one, you're going to start seeing everyone kind of popping in. Two Allisons. <laughs> <laughs> There's always so many Allisons. Um, people are just calling me DS <laughs> because... There, there must have been a, a a ton of Allison's born at the same time. <laughs> That's how I just started doing Mel because there were so many Melissa's all the time, and I'm like, I'll just, I'll just be Mel. <laughs> yeah, we have a Jesse and a Jessica. So, uh, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you all for being here, and Mel, this was amazing. I. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to hear if you guys thought it was helpful or what you, I guess, what your, maybe your favorite part was or most useful part. <laughs> I feel like it's always just such a good reminder to like keep a good mix going because we kind of get hung up on certain things and you forget to step back and be like, okay, what is like my social recipe you know, that I always want to keep in the mix. So I thought that there were so many great reminders. Good, good. Yeah. And I would love to hear like what your businesses are too. Yeah. That's actually the, our favorite part of this or my favorite part. I can't speak for everyone, but my favorite part of our programming is really just kind of round robin around the room, having everybody 
uh, say who they are, what their business is and like, what's exciting right now for them or what are they working on? Yeah. Um, yeah I would love to hear that. I don't need to talk anymore. <laughs> oh, well, you had many golden nuggets, so you can talk as long as you'd like. Um, okay. I will, I'll just go to my right. I have Allison Diaz. Always first. Um, <laughs> my name is Allison Diaz. I forget all the prompts. Um, I'm pretty, I'm very new to this group. I am recently transitioning from a career in marketing for a large CPG company and uh, basically just due to COVID and also due to my own um, just path and excitement is I'm, I'm launching my own business with uh, I'm still kind of trying to formulate everything and, and working on making sure the foundation is super strong. But what I'm looking to do is uh, photography and marketing consulting for small businesses. Um, and the name I have is called Vibrancy Studio. So it was really helpful to walk through, uh, go through the motions of, since I'm not quite there yet, is just like visualize how my page will be and, and go through the motions of when I get to that point, which it's like gonna be soon. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm excited and thank you so much for for sharing and, and yeah, talking with us. Today. I'm excited so to meet you all. Yeah, like before you start on all the social stuff, like there's a ton, so you'll get there. <laughs> thank you. Uh, okay, and then next I have uh, Demarius is next after Allison. Hi everyone. Um, yes, I own a. Uh, uh, my name is Demaris and I own a um, boys online children's boutique that sells sizes 2 through 10. And um, basically it's called Kids Bow, um, Kids Beyond Any Limitation. And I just came up with the idea because I have a set of twin boys that's six. And so it was just like when you go to stores, you see like the girl section is always like full galore. And I was just like, where is, is this it of the boy stuff? So <laughs> that's how I opened up a, a boys online children's boutique. So now I'm working on getting my spring shipment in um, or whatnot. And just, I noticed like, and that's why I asked you some of the questions. Cause I was like, man, I don't have enough lifestyle photos because I tried different posts and I noticed that stock photos really don't fare well with the, with my followers. And they were just like, no, nah, we're not. But anytime I posted anything of my kids or, you know, but with COVID, I didn't get a chance to do a big photo shoot or, you know what I mean? Like I tried with my phone, but I was like, I need some more kids. I need some more little boys. So I'm in the process of doing it. And it feels like, oh my God, I'm so behind, but I'm just trusting the process here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. It's photos are, are hard to get. And especially with COVID, I feel like we were all using the same ones over and over. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, after we go through, I want to ask Mel if you have any suggestions for getting like simple photography too. Yeah, yeah. So uh, next, Jessica. Hi guys. So I used to do social media for Soft Surroundings, um, which is a women's retailer based here in St. Louis. And I'm now doing freelance work for them with some social, but then I also have my own startup, um, Mount Indigo, that's like a sustainable fashion startup. And then I also get to hang out with Lindsay and the other women's creative crew and help behind the scenes with some of our events there also. But I'm always curious just about, um, yeah, like you said, social media is always changing. There's always new tools or the tools within it are always changing. And um, so just like always trying to stay on top of that and like make sure that I'm using it to the best of, you know, what's available out there. Thank you. And uh, for those that don't know, Jessica, she, I know she mentioned it a little bit, but she's the one really leading the charge with Megan for the Procure events. So uh, oh, cool. her blood, sweat, and tears that are producing Procure. So thank you. Luckily, for I haven't <laughs> cried or bled yet. <laughs> we've only had I'm one. Terrible. It's bound to happen. Yeah, we've only had one. <laughs> such a fun it's such a fun group and such a fun event i hope you guys come to our april 25th event um which is next sunday mm -hmm. yeah um awesome and then i have i see jeanette next 
Hi, everybody. It's Janae, actually. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's, okay. sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I get a lot of Jeanette, so it's I'm so it's sorry. Yes. <laughs> I um, I'm the owner of Be Lovely, which is a well-being and gift boutique, and we carry items that focus on self-care and treating the mind, body, and spirit. And I do this with the intention to support other women. So most of the products that we carry are actually from female artisans and female owned businesses. And I thought the session today was so good. I don't really, I, I've been active on social media, but it's not consistent. And I was the person who was like, okay, I've only focused on like a couple of, of the buckets where in in listing out my priorities, I really have about five and I've only focused really on two, if I'm being honest with myself, I said three, but I think it's really only a couple. So this was really good for me. Right now I am um, wanting to use social media more effectively. I know it hasn't been effective the way that I want it to be. I think this is really gonna help, but I'm also um, gearing up right now, just uh, preparing for um, pop-up season. I did a few pop-ups last year. I just launched at the end of September. So I'm fairly new with this too. I'm trying to figure it all out. Um, but I'm excited that people are getting out more and I look forward to doing some more pop-ups. So. Yay. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, next we have uh, Allison. Hi guys. Let me know if you can hear me okay. For some reason, my house just hates Wi-Fi and doesn't work all that well. But I'm Allison. I am with St. Louis Cheese Boards. And um, I started this business uh, last summer. And I also work full-time at Missouri Baptist. And what's exciting for me is that I actually just quit my full-time job at Missouri Baptist to venture off doing St. Louis Cheese Boards full-time. And I'm freaking out. So... <laughs> Um, but it was a big leap. I was there for 10 years and, you know, so now I get to spend time. I have three children, so I'll be able to spend time with them and grow my small business. So I'm pretty excited. And the reason I joined the, uh, you know, creative is that I really found that I have this like charcuterie board group of friends all over the United States and it's all these great women. And I'm like, there's got to be the same type of network of amazing women here in St. Louis. I just need to find, you know, where they are to support me. And so I found this and I just thought like all the resources and all, you know, all of you guys are probably like, is this normal? You know, how do I get this? You know, I'm sure we're all asking those same questions. So that's why I joined. So I'm really glad to have found all of you. Thank you for being here. And, that's and uh, Jesse is last, last in my screen. Hi. Um, I'm Jesse. I am super, super new uh, to all of this. I um, am a graphic designer and an illustrator by trade. Um, and I started dabbling in pottery and just absolutely loved it. And it's been going really well. And every time I share something that I've made, I get a message on usually on Instagram of someone saying, is this for sale? And so I keep selling everything I make. And I thought, you know what? I should see if I can't um, do something with this. And so uh, I'm at the brand new process of that. Um, I'm actually trying to build up some stock right now of different items so that I can get some good photographs. And so that, um, you know, I have more items than just one at a time that goes like that. Um, and so I've got some goals. For that, I'm hoping to build up some stock. Um, I applied to be at the Procure Market. Um, and then I'm just hoping to kind of like meet some people and get some wisdom and um, learn from you guys. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. That was a good point about um, how people were asking you if something was for sale or a lot of times like 
in the last six years or so of me doing my business, I kind of have followed what people are asking for and kind of just like let it go in a way I kind of drive it. But at the same time, I'm like, if this is what people want, then I think I'm going to go this way a little bit. So um, that's, I think, a really good point too. Um, maybe you have, do you, I was gonna say with the photos thing that we were talking about, maybe you have good photo tips for the clothing store. If you are selling items like that, I mean, how, are you doing your own photos and everything then? Um, yeah, mostly I'm doing my own photos. <coughs> I have this studio, um, and it's got a lot of white in the background. Um, so my photos are just really bright. Um, with lots of white background so that it really focuses on the product. And I find that that's pretty good. As far as like angles and actually taking pictures, I usually take like 10 before I get one that I really like. So I don't actually have any surefire tips for that, but um, I find that like white stuff, kind of a white background, it's been good for um, my products. Yeah. And I actually started um, following um, the kids, the kids be, um, do you say kid BAL for your shop? Um, yeah, it's kids bow. Kids bow. Okay. Yeah. I started following and I noticed like the brighter, like lighter photos look really yeah. good and stuff. Yeah. And it could even just be like, like even this is like such a good photo and it is bright and it's like lifestyle. And so even sometimes it probably does take a lot of tries though to get a kid to show the clothes. <laughs> it does. It does. They can be like awesome to work with, but if they're not in a good mood and then it's just like you can't just always reschedule them, you know, because people have stuff going on. So I know with my own kids right now, I just photograph them, but I'm in the process of you know, kind of looking for other kids and other influencers. And like when you're dealing with other kids, they can be cranky. You know, I have a nephew and I'm like, oh, he can be so hit or miss. And I'm just like, oh, <laughs> but I love it, though. I mean, I love it. Like, I love to see them dress in clothes and I love to see, you know, kid, you know, and I get a lot of moms that really, comp you know, comment on this, on my stuff, you know, say they really like it. So yeah, like these colors look so good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah I'm like, and that little boy, his name is um, Julian, um, but they call him Jules, but he was actually on in Virginia on a um, news, they put him on the weather report on the news. Yeah. Yeah. In that, that same sweat sweater. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> He's so cute. Yeah, that's a good idea to find like kid fluencers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like even just the bright, like a, a nice day with like nature, I feel like looks really right. good. Right. And, yeah. I mean, um, but yeah, her point about a white, like the white background too, like even if there was a, like a white brick wall or something to- right. Yeah, I mean, and you can find that, like, I don't know, a Subway sometimes is, like, um, yeah. like a sandwich shop. Like, sometimes they're just, like, white brick wall on the side, and right. you never know. I mean, it could be the weirdest place, and it could be a really clean backdrop. <laughs> and if it's a sunny day, like, you've got good lighting. So a phone might work really well. Well, actually, so uh, the Women's Creative, we're partnering with Empower, the new co-working space by Joya. Um, so we're going to be hosting all of our lunchtime events there. And so all of our members are going to have access into Empower when that event's going on. Uh -huh. um, and that they have beautiful white brick. And no matter what the weather is, uh, I feel like the lighting in there is just perfect. So um, just, I mean, when you're coming to lunchtime programming, bring some products and <laughs> take some photos. Also, uh, plug um i'm trying to build my portfolio right now so if you want to connect and i'd be happy to help with whatever you need or see if we can collaborate a little bit yes thank you i'm like oh my goodness this is not e i mean it to me is not easy because i work in it so to me this is not easy and i'm like man this is this can be difficult because everybody's like well you can always do it with your iphone i'm like yeah but it's not that simple <laughs> 
Yeah. So just Especially save it. Heard, and, right. <laughs> yeah. And if you're like, look over here, look over here. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> also, hold, it's like, yeah. It, I it definitely mean, has to be like a team effort. You need like, yeah, multiple photographers or a distraction or. Something. And you also, if they're kids that you know, it's like they might not want to listen to you as well <laughs> as as well as maybe other kids would. So that's hard. Yeah. Um, Allison, feel free to put your email in the chat. Um, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Reach out. Oh, gosh. How do I do this? Okay. To panelists and attendees. Yes. Yeah. That's perfect. And I, I didn't, I wasn't able to write down everyone's business. If you could put your business name in there, I'm trying to take notes and I want to yeah. follow everyone on, on Instagram. Yeah, I want to too as well. Thank you. Um, yeah, the uh, Mel, the, re the reminder that of just looking at the back end to find what time of day your followers are on was such a good reminder. I always forget about that. And I do social media marketing. <laughs> I forget it too for, for my own. It's so hard to, cause I do it for everybody else. But when it comes to post my own, sometimes I'm just like, oh, I'm just going to post this now. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> um, if I just wait an hour, you know, it might do a little bit better. So, um, in the Instagram insights interface, it can change. Sometimes it doesn't look the same as it used to. Um, and it really is a lot more hidden than it used to be with the, um, peak times. So a lot mm -hmm. of people I think thought it went away and I was like, no, it's there. <laughs> so. That's awesome. So um, I know one thing that also I'm going to, um, a lot of these messages are coming to, I think, are you guys seeing all of the Instagram handles in the chat? Mm -hmm. A few have come through just to me and I want to make sure you guys are all getting them. So I'm going to copy and paste them right now. So it looks like they're private. Um, one thing that we keep hearing just in conversations, Jessica and I've talked about this quite a bit, is it feels like there's just this hunger for to know like who to collaborate with, where to find collaborations. Um, and we want to be that advocate and kind of that conduit for our members to be able to know where to turn when you have an idea or a venue or a concept. Um, does, do any of you have any ideas right now or anything, um, any collaborations that you'd like to uh, consider doing or looking for partners? I know Janae, you had mentioned wanting to do a uh, like health and wellness event potentially. Yeah, so inspired by the pop-ups that I've gone to and even some retreats that have focused on that, like little weekend retreats, I was thinking about like a day long event, like a wellness event where there would be vendors who sell products similar to mine. I, I sell things like candles and oils and crystals and, you know, wellness things, but also have service providers who offer things that promote wellness and self-care. So like yoga instructors, massage therapists, um, Reiki therapists, I don't know, um, chiropractors, other people that just um, things that might promote wellness that I don't even think about. So um, right now it's just an idea. <laughs> I haven't really worked through a plan. So I, I had mentioned it when we spoke because I was hoping that, you know, this network of, of people might help bring this to fruition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Something that I'm also like really, it's oppositely passionate about is unplugging. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like this, like a woman, small business owner is never unplugging. And I started writing like on my own personal blog about how I, as a social media manager, get away from it all. Um, because I just like slowly was getting very overwhelmed by always feeling like I needed to be plugged in. So I feel like that kind of thing is really important for this group of like putting ourselves 
first and then taking care of our businesses, which is very hard to do. Yeah. Um, but I would love, I mean, something like that is like, right, you know, right up my alley for sure. Cool. We talk, uh, Rebe, uh, she was in here earlier, but then had to step away. Uh, Jessica and I talked to her last week and she's the one that uh, earlier she mentioned she wants her content to not feel so woo woo. Uh, <laughs> she's hilarious. Uh, but so she does, she works with crystals and um, she also wants to have um, host a session maybe for our collective members where she teaches you about mindfulness and meditation. And uh, even for the busiest of women, you know, um, female entrepreneur out there, you can take five minutes and meditate. Um, so that's something we are considering maybe doing a lunchtime programming. Do you think you all would maybe be interested in that? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. <laughs> I know I need it. <laughs> yeah. Like, give me all the crystals. <laughs> exactly. All the meditation. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, yeah, awesome. for sure. Uh, it'd be kind of cool. Like, I mean, I know we'll be starting to have more meetings in person soon, but it'd be kind of cool to just be like randomly mashed with someone like once a week or like once a month or something. And then you have like the month to maybe do like a coffee date or something like that. And it would just be kind of cool because maybe it's someone you would have never met otherwise. And like uh, a collective buddy system. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Or like was, Lindsay's uh, the matchmaker. <laughs> That's I a lot of like it. admin work. So if you need someone to like help with pairings and stuff, I, I feel like this is something I used to do in like my sorority and like at my job, I used to do this like employee resource group for our women's group. So <laughs> I'm just literally recycling. <laughs> Rinse, repeating everything uh, I used to do. You are hired <laughs> and I think we should do it. <laughs> That's so fun. Um, Allison, you also mentioned a uh, like creative date. You had yes, one. I had one today with a friend and like, it was just amazing. Every time I do those things, I feel like the universe just puts you in contact with amazing things and, and people along the way. So that could be part of the, the buddy system thing is like creative dates, I guess. So fun. Uh, the concept we were talking about. So there's this organization that I know of that does this really amazing mentor dinner where they, and you'd have to figure out like a new way of doing it, maybe with COVID or maybe after, you know, everyone's vaccinated or whatever, but they basically um, rent out like a big event space and have a certain number of like dinner tables that are circular, you know, that have like eight or 10 chairs at them, kind of like a um, those types of dinner events do. And each table has a designated like mentor or someone in the community. Like I think of like Betsy from Joya that like, you know, a lot of us know she's just come so far with her business and people really look up to her and like love hearing her ideas and her story. So let's say you had 10 of those people. They're each assigned to a table and then people that buy tickets to that dinner get to pick like their first, second and third choice of which table they want to sit at. And so, you know, they get one of those, you know, one of those choices, hopefully. And then it's like the whole dinner is just people kind of like networking at that table because they probably are all like interested in similar types of businesses or, you know, really getting to have like close connections and chats with that person. And I just thought that would be like such a fun type of, you know, event for some group here in St. Louis to do, or like, I'm sure there's a way to do that virtually with like breakout rooms or just things like that um, would be a, like a something fun too that um, maybe we could do sometime. Yeah, that sounds fun. Cause I feel like I definitely have those woman business owners locally that I'm like, I would love to eat lunch with her, but like, when would I ever meet her or her? Yeah, and maybe yeah. it's like a virtual lunch or something. Well, yeah. I know Lindsay's got lots of really fun virtual lunches planned and in person, our new, the new, like, um, lunch, lunch programming. Yeah. Yeah, we're, so those are going to be the second and fourth Wednesday of every month. Uh, we're hosting them at Empower, um, which is attached to Joya's headquarters, because uh, that's going to be, Empower is going to be the Women Creatives uh, headquarters. So it'll be really fun for all of us to be able to gather in person. Uh, so those lunches are going to be in person, but also we'll host them on Zoom too. 
so that if anyone wants to join virtually, you can. Um, so if you have any ideas for uh, programming, because those are just an hour, and we really want it to be more um, kind of like group think and um, little presentation, but really more networking, because at the end of the day, I think we're all here to just meet really good people. So uh, we'll be the very first program is going to be on the fourth, third, fourth Wednesday of this month, which is the 28th. And uh, we're gonna, for that program, we're gonna focus on how do you get your most, how do you get the most out of your membership with the collective? Cause, um, and just talking with some of our members, it feels like a lot of members don't know how to use, and I didn't know how to use this until I just kind of dug in, but how do you use the back end resources? Cause there's a ton of videos available and um, other resources in there from, you know, the last few years. And it, they can feel, you know, like they're buried and like there's too much there to kind of sort through. So I really want to go through all of that um, and just talk about the other um, offerings that are there for our members. And then uh, the second one in May, the first one in May, uh, Christina is going to talk about, going to give a session about using Canva like a pro. Because uh, Canva, I mean, Canva makes me feel like a designer and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then... Uh, we're going to, yeah, it's Canvas so good. And then we're just going to keep uh, funneling out lunch programming after that. So if anybody has an idea for programming, please share it. And you said the first one is on the 28th? Um, April 28th, yeah. Um, and then it'll be, so we're trying to, I want to get consistent just so it's easy to remember when the programs are. So lunch programs will be the second and fourth Wednesday from noon to one of every month. And then our evening programs we're combining the event and then the happy hour because I think just think it's easier to get people to join um, once. So those are going to be every third Thursday from seven to nine. And we'll just continue kind of go straight from the program to the happy hour like this. Um, okay, one idea I wanted to ask you about, uh, we've been thinking about just kind of like you were talking about the matching. Uh, do you think it might be helpful to even match like veteran collective members with like newbie collective members to kind of talk about um, their journey in the collective, but also uh, you'd feel like they would have learned a lot over their, you know, over the course of their time and also just maybe be at kind of an aspirational stage of their um, career. So that was something we've been kind of thinking about is just like matching new, newer members and older members. I think that would be fun. Uh, this is Allison. I used to be part of an organization called Healthcare Business Women's Association, and they would do that. They would set up someone who was kind of more of a veteran uh, healthcare business owner with someone that might be new to healthcare, and they would pair us up with people, and then we would go to coffee however often we felt comfortable with. But it was really nice because, again, not only was it a network opportunity, but it allowed us to see other facets of healthcare, which in this case, other facets of business that, you know, maybe we didn't think of. So I really love that idea. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, your time is precious and I don't want to take too much more of it. Uh, so any other questions or anything anyone wants to chat about? And no pressure. Uh, but, uh, you know, thank you all for joining us tonight and previous events. Uh, you know, you are why the collective exists. And Mel, thank you so much. This was true. I mean, again, I do social media marketing and this was amazing. So very, oh, good. very I'm so glad. Thank you guys for coming and listening. And if you ever, I mean, if you have any questions, you can send me a note on Instagram. I just, I love talking to people. So <laughs> it was so nice to meet everybody. Yeah. This is really yeah. good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all for being person. here. Um, and also this was recorded. So we're going to be putting it up on YouTube and in the back end of the website tomorrow. So uh, if you missed any part of it, it'll be there and available for you. So um, yeah, thank you all again. And uh, I hope you have a great rest of your, your evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye guys. Bye.